Last list of problems for the review. Uh, this problem has a number of definite integrals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find an antiderivative of this. 3x minus 1 half x squared would have this as its derivative. I'll evaluate that from negative 1 to 2. We'll plug 2 into this. So 2 times 3 is 6 minus 2 squared is 4 over 2. That's going to be 2 minus the same thing evaluated at negative 1, so that's going to be negative 3. Negative 1 squared is 1 times 1 half is 1 half. Okay, so this is 4 minus, hmm, I guess that's negative 7 halves, so that's plus 7 halves. This would be 8 halves, so that whole piece is 15 halves. Moving on to that next problem, an antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x. That derivative would be there. Got to evaluate that at 3 pi halves, then subtract evaluation at pi halves. Now, I'm going to cheat just a little bit. I'd like to go over here. Cosine looks like that. Just want to make sure that I'm getting the right points. Okay, so it finishes at 2 pi, halfway, the minimum is at pi, so pi halves, so we're at 0 here, 3 pi halves, so where it's also 0, okay, so when I plug in 3 pi halves, I get minus 0, minus, plugging in pi halves, I get negative 0, uh, minus 0 plus 0 equals 0, how about that? Okay, down here, first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of algebraic simplification to try and make my life more pleasant. This I'll think of as 1 fourth x to the 1 half. This I'll think of as x to the negative 2. Since the only power I can't use the power rule for is x to the negative 1, I'll go ahead and use the power rule here. That's, I'll leave my constant, x to the 1 half, add 1 to the power, so that's x to the 3 halves. Multiply times the reciprocal. Minus, add 1 to the power, that's negative 1. Reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1, so that just flips the sign. Evaluating from 9 to 1. Okay, so what shall we do here? Let's see. Uh, I guess those cancel, so we really just have... Uh, a 1 in the numerator and a 6 in the denominator. So 1 sixth plugging in uh, 9 into this raised to the 3 halves. Well, 9 to the 1 half, that's 3, and then 3 cubed is 27. So that would be 27. Uh, plus, let's see, this is 1 over 9. Okay, so we've got to do that minus the evaluation at 1, that should be a little easier, 1 sixth times 1 plus 1. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Here we could reduce those, that's a 9, that's a 2, so 9 halves plus 9. Uh, I suppose the best, the best common denominator for those is 18ths. So if you have 9 halves, to make that 18ths, you have to multiply the denominator by eight, 9 and the numerator by 9. That's 81 plus 2 more 18ths, so that's 83 18ths. Now, over here, hmm, what do we have? We have uh, 7 sixths, I suppose. And that would be something like 21 eighteenths. So if we add, if we subtract 21 from 83, that's 62 eighteenths. Uh, those both have a factor of 2 in them, so that's 31 ninths. How about that? What do we think of them apples? Well, 
Okay, moving on to the second half of this challenge. We're supposed to evaluate using u substitution. This is an indefinite integral. Seems fairly clear that uh, that would be a good choice for our u because it looks like if we have a u to the third there, we have a fairly decent shot of having that, of having that be our du. So let's see what we can do with that du is then going to be 3x squared minus 6x dx. Not so far off. I need to multiply this by 3, that by 3. So let's put in a 3 and a 1 third. That would make that piece right there my du. So I get 1 third the integral of cosine u du. Not all bad. The integral, or an antiderivative, let's say, of cosine u is sine u. So to get the integral, I'll put in a plus c. So 1 third sine of x to the third minus 3x squared plus c. How about that? OK, here we have a definite integral that we're going to have to use u substitution for. Let's see if we took the thing under our square root as our u. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be promising. Uh, that's x to the negative 1 plus x. That would make du negative x to the negative 2. Uh, negative x to the negative 2 plus 1 dx. So there's my du. There's my u. So I'm going to set that oh, equal to x equal to 1 up to x equal to 3 of the square root of u du. Well, you could really think about this instead of the square root of u du as being u to the 1 half, in which case it would be u to the 3 halves times the reciprocal of that, which is 2 thirds evaluated x equals 1, x equals 3. Substituting back in for what u actually is, that's 2 thirds. 1 over x plus x to the 3 halves evaluated at 1 and 3. Okay, that might be a little bit of work. So, we'll see what we can do. 3 halves, evaluating that at 3 3, I get 1 third plus 3, that's 10 thirds to the 3 halves. Now, 10 thirds to the th 1 half would be the square root. That's not really going to simplify it a whole heck of a lot. And then uh, raising it to the third isn't really going to cancel that. Minus 3 halves. If I plug in 1, I'm going to get 1 plus 1, so that's 2 to the 3 halves. Neither of these are going to be splendidly nice, because this is going to have a square root of 2. You could get rid of this and rewrite it as a square root. I'd think of this as a fairly acceptable answer. Or, if you wanted to, if you wanted to break this apart, you could say, um, write this as 10 thirds times the square root of 10 thirds, that's 3 halves. And if you wrote this as 10 thirds, it would reduce slightly with this. So we would get something like, let's see, 10 thirds times 3 halves, the 3's would cancel, and 1 factor. So we'd have 5 root 10 over 3 minus, uh, let's see, if we took this to the 3 halves, that would be 2 root 2, the 2's would cancel, so minus 3 root 2. That wouldn't be all bad. Uh, and if you really wanted to be obsessive-compulsive, you could um, get that out of the denominator. Uh, how would that work? I guess I would multiply by root 3 over root 3. So that would give me 5 thirds root 30 minus 3 root 2. Isn't that grand? Okay, so... Looking at this last problem, I've got a function inside a function, cosine 2x. Hey, and its derivative is sitting there, so 
it would be a shame not to allow that to be my u, so my du would be sine 2x. Using the chain rule, though, that's times 2 dx. Well, I don't quite have at times 2, but I can make one. I'll put in a clever 1 times 1 half and 2. Why? Well, because that circle there is going to be my du, so I'll have e to the u du. That's one of the nicest integrals you'll ever run into. That's e to the u plus c, and then we'll make that one half e to the cosine 2x plus c.